the materials that I have and that I use are um, just a plywood sheet to get Home Depot or Lowe's and um, I buy it in a four by eight. It's just naked wood, um, not much to it. Um, I buy the thinner wood because the wax adds so much weight. If you go start with a thick wood, then these end up so unbelievably heavy. It just doesn't make sense to start with a thick piece of wood. So um, when doing encaustic, you have to make sure that you, that the wax adheres to the surface. So you can't use a canvas or a fabric or anything like that because of course that can flex. And so you hang it on the wall and the temperature changes or the humidity level changes, that canvas or fabric is gonna flex and that wax is gonna chip off. So even though that's a, a porous surface, it's flexible and won't work. Wood works well, you can use plaster or clay. It has to be a bisque or just dry plaster because it has to have a porous surface to um, absorb the wax. You have to start with a base coat. This is a clear wax. It's natural beeswax with a tree sap resin to plasticize the wax. Um, it's a little bit more durable than a candle wax, um, but it will still melt. Like if you hang the work in a sunny window, you're going to have wax on the floor when you get home because the heat from the sun will potentially melt the wax. If you want to have a very clear background, like if you look at this piece, for example, the, the very back layer of this piece is that dark purple. If you want a color background like that, that's the first layer you have to put on your work is whatever color you want there. I have done work in the past where I wanted the wood grain to show through. And if I want to do that, then I'm going to start with just the natural wax. And then you'll be able to see the grains of the wood instead of a color. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with clear just for this to show you what I do. I just use the cheapest possible paintbrushes on the planet um, because they don't last very long. They break down because the wax is right around 250 to 300 degrees. So um, the bristles end up melting and the staples fall out and it just ends up being a disaster. So I just buy the cheap ones. Um, you paint a layer of wax on just like you would regular paint. And it doesn't have to be pretty. This is just your base coat to um, build on later and you're going to melt it out with a heat gun. I use um, a heat gun that I'll get out here in a second. I got in the scrapbooking section of a random craft store, there's no telling. Um, you can use one of the industrial heat guns if you're doing bigger work. When I do my large pieces I use a heat gun like they use to melt paint um, because it's a big giant piece of work. Um, Right now, the goal of the base coat is to make sure that it's, the piece itself isn't going to chip off or fall off the wood. So you take your heat gun and you just run it over and this is bonding it. It's giving it an opportunity to melt further into the wood. And you just heat gun it until it's shiny. You don't want to change the texture or anything like that. You just got to get it, get it started. The clear wax that I use is completely natural there's no it's not bleached you can buy bleached wax and it's truly clear but i like the look um the more natural look of the yellow beeswax the resin itself when it melts into the wax um it creates these little chunks and um the chunks are always part of my work so um if you're somebody that wants things to actually be like you can see some of those little weird chunky spots and dots that doesn't bother me at all just me so um, if you don't want the chunks and, and bumps, you have to be much more careful with the way you apply your wax. Um, that first level is down. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show four different textures on here. Um, we'll start with the smooth, smooth and work our way up to super chunky. 